So, about 13 or 14 months ago, which is a lifetime in FPV, I reviewed a frame and it was the Hyperloss CG 5 inch. Um, and at the time, I absolutely loved the frame. I thought it was the best frame I'd ever seen by a country mile and the quality just seemed immense. But like all these things, you don't really know at the point you review something whether longer term it's going to irritate you or bits are going to fall off or, you know, if your initial review was spot on or, you know, if you missed loads of stuff. And 13 or 14 months later, this is the original Hyperlow CG I reviewed, or should I say the frame, because as I'm always testing different bits and bobs, it's had different motors and ESCs and all sorts of stuff on it in that time. Still got the same Foxy Predator V1, which I think, if I remember right, it was the original camera. But the frame itself is basically the 13-month-old frame, 14-month-old frame that I reviewed. And in that time, it's had two front arms. Nothing else has ever broken. And if you want to take a good look at this frame, you will see why I love it so much. So you see I've dug gouges out of the end of this arm, but there's absolutely zero delamination because the carbon is woven. You'll see that the bottom plate is pretty much pristine, as are the rear arms, which have never been replaced. And again, you can see where I've gouged it on concrete, but again, it hasn't delaminated and that arm's still as good as the day that it was sent to me. I've got a chunk taken out of the antenna bit that sticks out of the back, but again, there's no delamination because the carbon is woven. And the top plate, as you can see, is exactly as pristine as the day that I built it. So, if you've been around for this channel for a while, you'll know that this is the frame that I always recommend to everybody. And there are lighter frames out there. Hyperlow themselves make R the RS and the RS Plus and tons of lighter frames. But this is the frame that I always recommend for freestyle. And the reason for that is this frame to me is like putting on a pair of really comfy slippers. It's not the lightest, it doesn't have particularly slender arms, but it just flies really, really good. It's got some heft to it and it doesn't break. And if you look at these arms, there is a zero wiggle after 14 months. And all of these press nuts are the original ones that it came with. And I don't even think I remember ever having to tighten them so 14 months down the line i was going into this summer thinking i've got all these quads floating around i need to sort of decide what i'm going to be flying so i decided to go down this route and this is the six inch hyper low CG and at one point I had two CG 5 inches but I sold one to a local lad who's still enjoying it simply because the damn thing never broke and I got sick of carrying around an extra quad so when I was thinking about the frames that I wanted to fly this summer um, I wanted two 6 inch and two 5 inch I've got the 6 inch smooth operator um, which is a frame I really really like um, but I wanted another CG um, but I wanted to try a 6 inch one so, because of Mantec in the UK are, as usual, out of stock of CGs, I contacted Rich at Hyperlow um, and said, can you send me a 6-inch? Um, and he kindly did, and I just paid the postage to get it shipped across. And I didn't say I was going to do a review of it or anything like that. It was just, you know, I'm going to build this up and um, I'm looking for another 6-inch. So here we have it, and I'll sort of link the original review up here 
nothing has really changed in all this time. Everything that I said in that original vi review stands true. It's still beautiful, fully woven carbon. It's still chamfered. The arms on this one are an inch bigger than obviously the five inch one. Um, this one, as you can see, has got purple TPU camera mounts on the front. That's simply because I'm playing around printing out different things at the moment. So I've got um, a camera mount which will hold um, the Crossfire antenna. I've printed off a GPS holder and um, Axie mount which will also run the Axie. And these files are just printed off um, Thingiverse. So the actual CG itself comes with these mounts but they're much better printed and they're in black. And it also comes with um, camera mounts for a micro camera. Um, I'm running a mini camera simply because if you've got a really good pair of goggles the difference in quality between a mini and a micro is noticeable. Um, and it's still, I like it for the same reasons as I liked it initially. I've always built mine in this configuration with the 20 mil standoffs and that suited me fine. You can choose to use these little plates which allow you to run your wiring underneath and make for a cleaner build or if you need space you can take them out. As you can see the arms are bolted one, two and your third one is your flight controller bolt which will run straight up and that makes the arms super stiff because we've got this triangular shape. On the underside you can see we've also got strap cutouts as well and that's because this frame can be built inverted excuse me and you can build it like so and just change this front bumper here and stick it on the bottom reverse your camera mounts and you've got an inverted frame i've never built mine like that but here's a mock-up that a friend of mine sent to me um, and you can see it looks pretty damn amazing now I was going to show you this fully built, that was my plan, but I'm having a bit of a crisis of confidence at the moment. And that crisis of confidence really revolves somewhat annoyingly around this, which is KISS V2. Now I've always flown Betaflight for the two or three years I've been flying. Um, I've built tons of quads, I've never had an issue with Betaflight, I know it inside out um, and I really like it. And I've always kind of been wary of the hype surrounding stuff like this with its much higher price tag um, however i built the um, petit soldat using kiss v2 and it just flies amazing and i can't i can't really get away from that fact and i'm sort of yeah, it makes every other quad that I've got fly awful. And that's not because of the frames or anything like that. It's simply because of the, the firmware on that on, on the KISS V2 flight controller or a bunch of settings that I've just stumbled across. So this was going to be built with the iFlight Twin G stack, but it's going to get the KISS treatment again. And I'm going to bodge in a Wolf PDB which I liked, and KISS V2. And I'm going to fly it and compare it to my Smooth Operator 6-inch, which is a really, really stiff and sturdy frame. And if KISS yet again thrashes beta flight, um, I'm going to have to ask some serious questions about the immense amounts and thousands of pounds of, of, um, thousands of, pounds of cash I've spent on this hobby. Um, so yeah, so take from that what you will. I'm not, I'm not, you know, saying everybody should rush out and buy Kiss Two. I'm just saying there's a sort of guy who loves this hobby that I'm feeling a little bit let down by my existing quads in comparison to the Kiss setup. So that's why it's not built. So to end this video, and as I said, that if you want the nitty gritty on this, um, head off to my original view review to end this video if you want a five inch freestyle frame and this is obviously the six inch 
But if you want a five inch freestyle frame, and you're not too, you don't need to have the lightest thing, you want a frame that's gonna live and survive, go out and buy this. It's easy to live with, it doesn't break, and I've had mine for donkeys, and it's still amongst my favorite frame. You know, if you like super light quads with skinny arms, then, you know, help yourself and do whatever you want. What I'm hoping for from this is that I don't lose too much of that strength by using, obviously, longer six inch arms. So, this is kind of be the end of this video. And as I said, it's not a video that I plan to make. I plan to do um, a build overview, but Rich sent me the frame and I kind of felt it was the right thing to do to do a video around it. But as I said, the reason why I'm not doing too many videos at the moment other than the flight stuff is because, because of this. Yeah, um, so yeah, so that's it. Apple OCG, my favorite frame. Everybody always asks me every time I review a, another frame, whether it's the smooth operate, etc. you know, is that better than the Hyper OCG? No, it's not. Nothing ever has been. Um, things have been lighter, things have been sleeker. Some things have been arguably, arguably prettier, but none fulfill as many tick boxes as this particular frame does easy to work on strong does the job without letting you down and that summarizes really what i want from a freestyle quad so that's that out of the way in other news i've been flying the sky sky zone or three and comparing it to my fat shark hdo so i'll have to do a video on that at some point because um, things aren't as black and white as you might think. Um, a couple of the recent videos have been made around this guy, which is the Shendron's Nutmeg. And this is a, is a really odd little thing. And some of the footage that you can put out is absolutely stunning. So that deserves a video on its own. Um, have we got anything else to talk about? Yeah, and I'm going to do... When I've sort of gathered myself... I'll pit Betaflight versus Kiss V2. Um, I need to spend a day in the feed field really with a laptop and see if I can get Betaflight up to speed and give it what I'm feeling from Kiss V2. Or, you know, maybe I'll build another Kiss V2 quad and it'll be shit and I'll be, to be honest with you, happily relieved. Because um, I could do without spending 50 quid on a flight controller every time I want to build a new quad. But yeah, I call it as I see it, and right now, that's what I'm thinking. So that is the end of this video. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. And just around this, um, I got this via um, a buddy, Mark, who's been running the Squirt V2. And he was doing some amazing things with it. So when he was um, making another Shendron's purchase, he messaged, uh, messaged me and asked me if I wanted to order anything. Um, and I did want the Squirt, but they, they were out of stock, so I got this guy. Um, and we got sort of chatting about stuff. And Mark is a really talented, or I think really talented from what I've seen, um, sort of 3D CAD designer. And he sort of showed me, must be six or seven months ago, um, some really unusual frame designs he'd um, come up with and his idea was that he was going to get them cut um, and I said that I'd pay for one um, once to be cut for me so I could test it um, as I sort of thought it was pretty exciting and we were sort of chatting away late at night via messenger as you do um, and he's I can't remember what the subject was but he kind of said I call him, it's really bad, but I call him Ormerton because he's really unreliable. Whenever he says he comes round, he, he never does. And Ormerton, as you probably know um, from myself, is not a company I'm a particular fan with. Um, and in my view, you spend more time picking up arms, etc., than you do flying them. Um, so anyway, I call him Ormerton. And then that led to um, a conversation about what he would call his frame. Um, and I jokingly said, I'd, if I had one, I'd call it the Cuts Carbon, because I'm sick of all the hype that goes on. And I'd, I'd have a series of motors called the Egg Whisks. 
Um, you know, I'd have a flight controller called the clever bit and sort of stuff like that. And he messaged me back and said, well, I can design you a frame if you want. You know, let's have a chat and see what you want and blah, 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 blah. And I kind of sat there and thought, I've never really thought about designing my own frame. It's not something that I've ever really, everybody would love a frame in their name, but it's not something I've ever really considered. And I kind of thought about it for a minute and then I sent one back and said, I don't really need to design my own frame because as naff as this sounds, it already exists. And this sounds like a really cheesy sales video, but this can, this frame kind of is me. It's the frame I've spent mo the most time with of any of my quads. You know, this guy is the frame you'll see in the majority of my videos in one way or the other. It's the frame that's never let me down. And it's the, if it's, it's the frame that if I'm doing something tricky or I want to practice something new or I'm flying in an unfamiliar place, it's the frame that I always fly. Um, so there you go. I sound like a used car salesman and I do forgive anybody, but if you've been around this channel for a bit, you'll know that this isn't bullshit. It's just the truth as I see it. So there you go. Um, when I've worked out what I'm doing, I'll do a build video on this um, in terms of other stuff because I'm in a bit of a crisis of faith right now. I haven't really looked into reviewing any other stuff um, until I work out what I'm doing. Yeah. So there you go. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.